All right, what's good? What's good, man? Y'all let me know if y'all can hear me loud and clear. If y'all can hear me loud and clear, let me know, man. Let me know so we can get ready to do this thing. Appreciate everybody being in the joint, man. Let's get ready for it. Let's get ready to do it. Appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. Zentura, I see you. The Money Boys. What up, man? I see y'all boys, man. Salute. Appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. Y'all give me a second, man. Let me go turn the ringer down on this phone while the people come in. All right, let's get ready to do this thing, man. Let's get ready to do it. Let's let the people come in here, man. Give them about, give, give them about two or three minutes, man. Hope everybody been having a bang up week so far, man. Hope everybody been hanging a bang, been having a bang up week so far. I see my brother SJ3 up in the joint. Salute to my brother SJ3. Markel, what's good, young homie? Torrance Hall, salute. Appreciate y'all being in here, man. What is man joining me out here in the kingdom today? Got a great show lined up for the day, man. Great show. If y'all haven't seen it, man, y'all go to the BOA channel, man. Got a uh, a clip of the Manosphere Anthem video, man. The actual um, actual video premiere date, man, is coming up. Uh, also going to premiere, going to do a clip, show y'all a clip of the video for uh, Almost Alpha. You know, striving to become the most alpha version of you, that joint. So y'all be looking for that, man. All right. So let's get ready to do this, man. Royal T, what's good, brother? What's good? What's good? Let's give the people one more minute, man. We'll give them another minute. Give them three minutes to get in before we go in. You know, good to wake up today, man. Still be in the land of the living. Still be able to strive. Still be able to move ahead. Still be able to take the lessons that we learn from the past, man, to keep building the future uh, by, you know, building a foundation today. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, man. And uh, we're going to talk about how much of a blessing that is today and how you can't let that blessing fall to the wayside because you're focusing too much on what's already taking place. You know, one of the greatest drawbacks in the world is for men to understand that focusing on the past and thinking about the spilled milk and just looking at it is not going to benefit you in any way. So let's go ahead and get ready to do this, man. All right. So the first thing I want to say is this, man. You've heard the old adage. You can't cry over spilled milk. Don't cry over spilled milk. And what that means is. Be aware of the fact that no matter what you do. You still have to wake up every day and keep going. So no matter what happens today, no matter what type of quote unquote mistake you make today or what lesson you learn today you still have to get up and live tomorrow see if you got a job and you go there today and you don't finish the work that you have for today well guess what you may be able to finish that work tomorrow but if you already got work to do tomorrow then you got to figure out how to squeeze the work from today in we already deal with spoiled milk in our lives every day the only time we get caught up in letting the spoiled milk stop us from moving forward is when our emotions are attached to the things that we do in our lives. Don't cry over spoiled milk. Wipe it up and move on with your life. See, here's the thing. The mess has to be cleaned up anyway. No matter what mess you make in your life, before you can move on, you got to clean the mess up. You ever seen anybody cook in their kitchen? They got flour all over the place, whatever they're cooking with. They don't clean up the kitchen. They come in the next day. They just cook some more. They got more stuff piled up. Before you know it, they got dishes piled up to the ceiling. Having dishes piled up to the ceiling is not something that many of us have ever seen. If you see that in a household, it's probably a house with hoarders in it. So the mess has to be cleaned up either way. Here's what you got to think about. it: Either you're going to wipe the mess up now 
or you're going to scrub it up later. See, when they spill milk, get paper towels, wipe it up. It's gone. Never tell it was there. Run the swifter across it one time, man, it's good. You never could tell it was there. Spoiled milk does not leave a stain. Old dry milk that was spoiled and never cleaned up may possibly leave a stain. If you waste some wine on your shirt, what do you do? You put one of those pre-stained things on it to keep that stain lifted from getting into the, the essence of the fabric. Then you wash it, and it'll come out most times. But if you take that same shirt, you spill that wine in and just throw it in your dirty hamper, in your dirty clothes hamper, you might as well throw it away when you get it out. You're not going to be able to get the stain out because you know what happened? It has set into the fabric. And that's what happens when you crowd with spilled milk. You let that spilled milk dry up, which means it has set into the fabric of your life. So now, instead of just having spilled milk to wipe up, you have a stain in your life. Stains are what hold people back from believing that they deserve the things that they're working for in their life. If you clean it up later, it will leave a stain. There is no doubt about it. Every single time, 100% of the time, if you clean up the spill later, when you allow it to dry, because the only thing you're doing when you allow it to dry, you're just festering in the spoil. Oh, man, I spoil some milk. I spill some milk. Oh, man, what am I going to do? I spill some milk. Oh, man, I, I did this, man. I should have did it the other way. The only mistake which is what you think that is. You think it's a mistake. Spoiling, spilling milk is not a mistake. If you spill some milk, that milk should never stay in that spill long enough to spoil. Spoil spill milk is a totally different thing. That means you spilled it and you left it there. You didn't try to wipe it up. You didn't try to look at it and see what's the easiest way to navigate it. And I promise you, if you look at life and worry about mistakes, then that means you're not looking at life learn, worrying about learning lessons. The only mistake is not heeding a lesson you've already learned through trial and error. If you know that's not going to work and you do it again, yes, that's a mistake. See, mistakes are stupid. Learning lessons is not done. Learning lessons is a part of life. Making a mistake is a stupid decision to do something that you already know isn't going to work or do something that you already know is detrimental or do something that you already know is wrong or do something that you already know won't get you the desired result that you're looking for. That's what spilling milk is. You spill it, wipe it up, learn the lesson, move on with your life. And here's the thing. The problem with spilling the milk is most times we get caught up in our emotion, worrying about who got hurt when we spilled the milk. Let me tell you all something right now. And this may sound a tad bit selfish, but it is not. It is just logical. It doesn't matter who got hurt by your spilled milk. Unless you spilled it intentionally to harm that specific person or persons, or you spilled it with reckless abandon, putting everybody in harm's way then there's nothing you could do about it. People get caught up in situations all the time. If someone is affected negatively by a decision that you made that you thought was the right decision, then you don't have to feel bad about that. You did what you thought was the right thing to do. That's why it's so important to always do the thing that you think is the right thing to do because you don't have to suffer the consequence of knowing that you did the wrong thing and somebody suffered from it. As long as you do the right thing, whatever you think is right is right at that particular time. Now, I don't mean you can't do the, you can't do the opposite of what you know is right and say, well, at that time, it was right because such and such. No, I mean the thing that you absolutely believe in if you do what you believe in what more can we ask of you even if what you believe in is wrong at least when you do it you believe in it you're not going against what you think you should be doing you're not going against the best thing for you and so as long as you do what is best for you and best for the people around you and you really believe that's what you're doing hey man if somebody you know is, is, a, is a casualty of whatever decision you made Man, you can sympathize or empathize with them, but you got to move on. Life doesn't stop no matter when you do. Life doesn't stop. The only thing that can get in your way is death. The only finite thing is death. When you no longer need to breathe in the oxygen of the earth. Otherwise, you have time to keep moving.
See, you know the number one problem with men in this particular society and women too as well with people in this society, with people in this world. People always have this undying loyalty to their old life or the people, places, or things in it. I was talking to some young guys, man, and you know they had somebody do some things for them early in their career, and now they feel obligated to owe that person. Hey, man, listen, you don't owe someone who helps you because they want to see you win. Because people who help you because they want to see you win, they're not going to receive any recompense from you. They just want you to capitalize on what they did to benefit you and go ahead and become successful. Don't allow me to contribute my time, effort, and energy to what you're doing and you just throw it to the wayside and don't put in the work to make it happen. But if I, in, listen, if I invest in a business and I recoup my money, 10 years down the line, that business don't owe me nothing. They, they literally don't have to let me come in and eat at a discount. They don't have to do anything. Don't allow people to tie you to what you did before or even worse than that, tie you to what they did before. I pay my mother's bills, but not because I'm obligated to. I'm not obligated to. I'm obligated to provide for my children, not my mother. I do it out of the kindness of my heart for no other reason. It doesn't matter how well you were raised. It's, it's your parents' job to raise you. That's their responsibility. You don't owe them for doing what they need to do. Even if you see someone else who had a worse parenting experience. So what? That's their life. You can't, you can't attempt to emotionally embody somebody else's life. If you didn't live that life, how can you sympathize with it? You surely can't empathize with it. You may be able to sympathize with it, but empathize you cannot do. This is one of those things that ties you to your old pleasures and disruptive vices. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you can't overcome the past because of something that feels good, because of something that tastes good. Because you, that's, man, that's the worst possible thing. Because on every level of life, there are things that feel good and taste good. On every level of, on every level of life. My standards are very high when it comes to relationships. They are very high, extremely high. Whereas there are certain women who are eliminated from the position, man, from the time I meet them. There's that, there's that disqualifying factor in their life. And one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to compromise on the disqualifying factors. Why? Because I have a life to protect the same way you do. Now, if I say, okay, well, I did this before or I did that, so maybe I should be a little more lax on my standards because of, no, I wiped that milk up already. Nobody can hold me to the past spilled milk because I wiped up all my spilled milk. You understand? I didn't leave any spilled milk on the floor. I didn't leave any spilled milk on the counter. When I spilled the milk, I didn't cry over the spilled milk. And let me tell you, man, something now. If you've had spilled milk, that you actually cried over? That wasn't spilled milk. That was spilled blood, sweat, and tears, man. Just because you spill it don't mean it's milk. Most times when you're crying over spilled milk, you ain't crying over the milk. You're crying over the blood, sweat, and tears that it costs you. Blood, sweat, tears, and years sometimes that it costs you but spilling that milk. Nobody just wakes up and spill milk from their bedroom. You got to get up, go into the kitchen, get a glass, attempt to pour some milk and spill the milk. It takes effort to spill milk. And the reality of the scenario is you have to understand that you have to slow down everything you do in life. Am I saying go at a tortoise pace where you can't get nothing done? No, I'm saying slow down to the point where you can be effective and efficient. Most times when you spill the milk, it's because you are rushing through life. When you do something you shouldn't have done, it's because you were rushing through life. You wasn't thinking about it. You was too busy thinking about the result rather than thinking about the action. That's why I say all the time, focus on the process of progress. Don't worry about the end result. The end result is going to roll up on you. If you can, if you're paying attention to the end result, then you're not paying attention to the process and the end result won't come. The end result sneaks up on you when you're paying attention to the process. That's in every facet of life, not just in your career, not just how you make money, not just in fitness and wellness and health. That's in every facet of life. Pouring a, pouring a glass of water 
if you take your time, you don't spill it. Ironing a shirt. If you take your time, you don't burn it. Preparing for a trip. If you take your time, you don't leave important things behind. Life is about pace. Every time you spill milk in your life, you were going too fast. You were going too fast. Every time you made a mistake in your life, what well, you did the same thing that you already saw didn't work before. You were going too fast. You weren't thinking. You got to think your way through everything. There is not a single decision that I make that I don't think my way through. That's why I surround myself with people who can move like that. I don't surround myself with people who have to put in a two week notice or something like that, man, before they can make a move. I need them to make a move. I don't deal with people like that because that don't fit into my life. And I'm not going to adjust my life to fit their life. Everybody in my life has to already have a life that fits into mine or they're going to have to make an adjustment to fit into my life. Because I'm the one that got to deal with the milk being spoiled. If the milk gets spoiled on this journey, guess who everybody going to look at? Guess who milk it is? It's my milk. But sometimes I got to trust somebody else to take the milk or take the glass of milk to the next table. I'm over here doing this. I'm over here buying more milk. They got to take the milk to the next table. You know, part of the problem is that too, people are too busy running with a crowd instead of walking with the most high. The problem is God is guiding your steps. So you're up and down, up and down, up and down like a roller coaster because God is guiding your steps. When God guides your steps, it's, it's ascension the entire time. All you do is ascend. You don't ascend, descend, ascend, descend. You don't do that. Can you imagine being on a plane, man, where you're taking a flight from New, from New York to L.A.? And, and, and your plane has to land at every major airport on the way. So every state, your plane is landing. Landing, taking 30 minutes, going back up. Going to the next state, landing, taking 30 minutes. There is no way you would accept that. You would rather drive than do that. And that's how life is. You have to have ordered steps, man. Your steps are ordered. Are you following those ordered steps? Or are you doing your own thing, trying to figure things out your own way? Are you leaning to your own understanding? So let's talk about some of these, the, 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 these milk spillages that go on in your life. Living beyond your means instead of living with meaning that spilled milk. See, when you live beyond your means, the spilled milk is that you got a bill due and you ain't got the money or all your bills pay and you ain't got no money. You know, man, there are people in the world, man, who live check to check when they make 50000 a year and then still live check to check when they make 150000 a year and still live check to check when they make 300000 a year because it's not the money. It's the habit that keeps you spilling milk. It's the mindset that keeps you spilling milk. At a certain point, you shouldn't be spilling milk anymore. If you're in your 30s, you shouldn't be spilling milk. If you're in your 40s, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, even, you shouldn't be spilling milk at all. If you're in your 50s, you shouldn't even remember what spilled milk looked like. If you're in your 60s, you should be asking me, what is milk? You see what I mean? This life is about growth. And the only way you grow is by not festering on things that are this hand sitting there that could be easily remedied. You got guys sitting around here, you're in a marriage and you absolutely hate being in it, but you won't divorce. Why? Because you keep telling yourselves reasons why you should just let that milk stay on the floor until it dries up. Well, what happened when the milk dries up? Well, there's a stain on the floor and now you're stuck. And then nine times out of 10, once the woman sees the stain on the floor, she divorces you. Now you now you done lost everything but the stain. Govern your life as if you want to win. Govern your life as if you want to win. What is your meaning for living? Your meaning for living can't be making money. You could do that and you can break the law and make money, so that can't be your reason. You see, you know what the problem is? You should have a healthy fear of staying the same. You should have a healthy fear of 10 years down the line being in the same position you're in right now. That, that should be your driving force. One of the major driving forces ever should be 
Waking up 10 years down the line and you're still in the same position. You know why? Because they mean you spent the last 10 years, man, just walking over puddles of spoiled milk, spilled milk that turned spoiled because you let it stay down there for so long. And I want y'all to think about that. Ask yourself, why is it that you are being held up by everything that you do that you think is wrong, that you think is a mistake, that you think you can't recover from? Man, you've been recovering from things your whole life. You were born, you recovered from coming into a world after you had been in a womb for nine months. If you can overcome that, what can't you overcome? You have to embrace life. You have to take life by the horns, man. Embrace it. There should be no fear of the unknown. Your fear should be of the known. You should fear the things you know still being relevant in your life 10 years later. You should fear the unknown. Every day is unknown. If you fear the unknown, you're waking up every day living in fear. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So in order to fear the unknown, you are already fearing. You spend today fearing what's going to happen tomorrow. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's the type of thing that has you ignoring wrong and admonishing right or swapping wrongs and rights. You know you should wipe that spilled milk up, but then you're telling yourself the reason why you shouldn't. You're telling yourself the reason why you won't. Fear of staying the same should motivate you more than anything, man. I'm telling you. Because life isn't guaranteed. So to blow 10 years and accomplish nothing and still be in the same position in every facet of life, that's failure. That should be your greatest fear. Waking up 10 years later and seeming like it's today. Think about how sedentary and stable i won't even say stable but sedentary and simplistic and not simplistic in a positive way your life must be for you to wake up 10 years later and it's like you ain't even lived 10 years because your 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 life is exactly the same exactly the same man you got to get out there and get it because here's the thing you can't fear taking risk you can't fear going out there getting what you want because it ain't around you right now if fear of the unknown worked, then everything that you wanted would be right there where you are right now because your fear of the unknown would be getting you there. If your fear of risk taking is going to make you not do the things you need to do, then you're going to be stuck where you are. What is the risk? The risk is staying stuck where you are. Jumping off the porch is not a risk. Jumping off the porch is a necessary thing that you must do in order to get to the things you want. The risk is not jumping off the porch, expecting things to come to you where you are. That's the risk. And it's, it's a risk that won't pay well. You might as well not take that risk. It's not going to pan out. It's a terrible risk to take. Terrible risk. See, the reason that you suffer from that risk aversion is because you don't see the potential in yourself so you feel more comfortable with this version of yourself you know and the things you've already done you don't have enough confidence in your potential to jump off the porch when i jump off the porch I say, okay bam i'm about to go I'm about to go do this And you have to do it because nothing that you want to achieve is at your house. Nothing is. Nothing that you want to achieve is in your immediate environment. Everything in your immediate environment, you've already achieved that. You've already done that. You can't live every day like you can like you can predict your time of demise. You don't know when you're going to pass. So you're going to waste a day not taking risks. You're going to waste a day not doing your thing. You're going to waste a day not wiping up that spilled milk. Stop crying over spilled milk. Wipe it up. And move on with your life. Either you overcome mistake grief now. Which is many, many, many people in this society suffer from what I call mistake grief. 
You're grieving because of this quote unquote mistake you made. Well, here's the problem. Either you overcome that mistake grief now or you will die with regret later. The, the only outcome for not overcoming mistake grief is to be on your deathbed with a bunch of regrets. A bunch of regrets about not doing this, about not doing that. About not taking this opportunity, about not taking that opportunity, about not relocating, about not getting out of that relationship, about not 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 coming on board with those people who believe in what you're doing, about keeping those people on board who don't believe in what you're doing, about you have to be willing to do the necessary thing. And you can't do that if you're still crying over spilled milk. You can't do it. The Swarthy Rizzard, appreciate the $50 sponsorship of the show, brother. I appreciate it. Hope I'm not late. Please open the gate. The gate is open. Salute to you, man. Appreciate you being in the joint. See, you know what the problem is? You got to stop paying attention to the negative energy in your life. Whether it's the negative energy of, of, of others or the negative energy that you create around your quote unquote mistakes. Because I promise you, you probably haven't made any mistakes at all. A mistake is when you do something and it burns you and you go right back and do it again. Most of us don't do that. Most of us don't do it. Even a man who continues to try to be in a committed relationship, he doesn't try to do it with the same type of woman or the same, a woman with the same characteristics. He at least makes an adjustment. And that's all life is about. Life is about just making adjustments, man. You're not dumb. You know the things that you need to fix from the last situation. You know the things that you need to improve upon from the last situation. You know the things that you need to implement into the new situation. You know the focus, determination, and drive that you need to put into the new situation. Whether that situation is romantic, whether that situation is financial, whether that situation is spiritual, mental, emotional, no matter what it is, you have to put yourself in a position where you are going to enter that situation with confidence in your ability to achieve the things that you need to achieve. You can't live the life of a failure and think that you're going to be successful at anything. So stop crying over spilled milk. Live every day like it's your last. Because one day you'll be right. And you don't know when that day is, man. You don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste you don't have time to waste believe in you believe that you're smart enough to learn from what you just went through believe that you're wise enough to store and compartmentalize that information believe that you're wise enough to not do the same thing again because you already saw it didn't work Force yourself, control yourself, beat yourself over the head, make yourself believe and understand that you know how to navigate this next situation in your life. If not, you, you can't stay stuck in the porch. Get off the porch. All the puppies are on the porch, the big dogs in the yard. But the big dogs have all the best food. All the best toys. All the runaround room that they need. And it'd be cool if you were a pup on the porch, but you're a big dog on the porch. You're a big dog on the porch of your life, scared to go down the stairs. Afraid to go down the stairs. Give yourself credit for being who you need to be at this particular point in life. And stop crying over spilled milk. Get some paper towels and wipe it up. Then put a swift or the mop on it. Voila. It's gone. And the only thing that's left is for you to get out of your own way. Stop selling yourself short. Stop treating yourself like you don't believe in yourself when you're the only one who truly does. Stop being afraid to take risk. Go to the edge of the porch. Say Geronimo. 
and jump out. Peace.